we've seen earlier that with uh, websites which have more than one web page, which is practically every website, uh, we tend to store our common styles uh, in one style sheet and our unique style for each page uh, on unique style sheets, which are only linked to by uh, one page at a time. Uh, now, what about if we have unique content on each page? If we have a website with maybe 10,000 web pages and we have to, say, add an extra link uh, or change the address in the footer, uh, to change every single web page in such a website would be an enormously time-consuming uh, and frustrating and not to mention boring task. Uh, so, just as we put common styles in a common style sheet, it makes sense to put, say, the common banner image in the header tag, the links in the nav tag, and the address in the footer tag into common uh, files that can store this information. Okay, and um, this is what include files are all about. Uh, we we create uh, just uh, an include file uh, for the nav, an include file for the header and include file for the footer and also an include file for the uh, connection code. So let's think about how we might do that. Okay, so at the moment uh, in the resources uh, we have index.php and when we start to examine it uh, we will probably realize that that's going to be common code. That's going to be common code. Chances are this section is going to be unique and then this is going to be common at the bottom. So it sort of makes sense that we put the header somewhere and access a common, just in case we want to add a banner image or whatever into it, uh, similarly with the nav and the footer. So that's going to be the plan. Okay, so uh, I'm just, this is in the resources, I'm just going to work into a new folder. Just keep my work uh, separate okay i want to replace it yeah okay so just keep this separate okay so what is the approach here well the approach is to first of all go into wherever we're working and we just create a new folder here called includes okay so these tiny files are going to be called include files and then we could have one called just nav.php, just double check I'm in the right place. Okay, so we're going to store it in the include subfolder and we're just going to call it, uh, or even just menu.php, something like that will be fine. And just leave it as all types here. Okay, so it's menu.php. Okay, and essentially the plan here is just to Cut that out. Okay, paste it there, save that, and then come back in here and just type a bit of PHP here. Okay, and I'm just get the syntax uh, completely right. And here we go on page seven. Okay, include and then the path. There are includes subfolder, and then it's called menu.php. Semicolon. Okay, like so. So let's run this now and see what happens. Remember, when you run it straight from Notepad++, it's going to be run from the server side. So let's just run it from the client side. There we go there. Okay. So index.php uh, has got the nav in an include file. And when we view page source, we just see the nav like that. Okay. So it's appearing uh, like that. If we make a mistake, 
Okay, if we have spelt the include file name or the include uh, command or the path incorrectly, uh, what will our page look like? There we go, those sort of errors. Okay, so these, these are errors, uh, no such file or directory. Uh, line 13, we're getting an error there. Line 13, so no such file there. Okay, so let's fix that. And what about if we spell the PHP? I mean, you should notice that error straight away because it's not uh, it's not coming up in blue bold. Okay, so we're getting those sort of errors there. So try and make these errors. That way, you'll recognize the error message, uh, and it'll be easier easier to fix. Okay, so that's the first one. We could do the same for the uh, the header. like that so again all we need to do is go and paste it like that come back in here and we know we're going to need light of code like that so let's just paste that there and then put in header that and then go back here and we see we're seeing our header is appearing here okay if we have a mistake in our code Okay, so let's recreate that sort of mistake there. Got the header file uh, misspelled. Come back in here. What we find here is that the because there's an error in how we've spelled the header file, uh, we get errors there, but the rest of the page is displayed normally where, where there is no error. Now, okay, that's fine in so far as it goes. Uh, if we had a database connection code, if we had a database connection code in a in an include file and we had an error in the connection, uh, that would be pretty serious and we mightn't want anything else on the page to appear. Okay, in which case we would use uh, require. And in fact, we would use re the require once uh, command. Okay, so the require once, if you're... Uh, normally, we put our PHP connection code right at the beginning of the web page uh, before the doc type. And we once we have the connection created at the beginning of the web page, we, we won't need to create create the database connection again on the same page. Okay, so we only need to do that once. Uh, we should be setting our connection code to be require, require once. Okay, because if there's a problem, we don't want the rest of the page to display. For example, we might be running a select all later on in the page. The select all is not going to work if we don't have a connection code. So you wouldn't want the associated HTML with the selection code to appear. So let's see what happens when we use require once then uh, with the header misspelled. Okay, that's essentially what we're getting here. We're getting the errors in relation to uh, header. Okay, and nothing else appears on the page. Okay, so you wouldn't really be doing that for header, nav, and footer, but you would be you would be using required once for your database connection code. Okay, so let's just put this back to normal. 
Uh, just double check that's so good. Yeah, there we go again. <coughs> okay, and view page source. We have no idea where HTML is coming from. Okay, remember, essentially, PHP's ultimate job, last job, is to deliver HTML onto the web page. So we have no way of distinguishing that's in an include file, that's in an include file, or that is in an include file. So include file is very wide, widely used. If our website now has 10,000 pages in it, and we have our header nav and footer in include files, then all I need to do is add in one line, an extra link, and all four pages will have it. So for example, uh, here is index. If I save this as page two, okay, and I'm also going to save it as page three. And let me look at the nav here, okay, and let's just save it as. Uh, page four as well. Okay, so I now got four web pages, all of which are using the menu. And inside the menu, uh, I see that I've only got three links here. So I need another one here. Maybe something like login. Okay, so let's see what happens now. I refresh the page here. I can see I'm picking off my fourth uh, as I go here. Uh, okay, I, don't, I haven't changed the content, but you can see page two is appearing there. Join is page three, and login is page four. And on each of those four pages, we are getting the header include, we are getting the nav include, the menu include, and we're getting the footer include. So very powerful. Uh, thing to be able to do very useful uh, make one change and it updates all four web pages so we'll be looking for that in your projects